We are in the zone with Bills wide receiver Robert Woods and his special guest, wide receiver Marcus Thigpen. Hi, I'm Dave Jixter. Buffalo comes up short and plenty of questions as the Bills prepare for Houston. We are going to break it all down. And I'm Brad Galbert, and we've been taking your social media questions all day long. We are in the zone. In the Zone with Robert Woods on WBBZ TV is presented by Transitown Automotive Group, serving Western New York for over 40 years. Trust Transitown, Creekside Sales and Service, Outdoor Equipment Store, your factory authorized Cub Cadet and Mahindra dealer. Dewville College, educating for life. And now from the WBBZ studio, here's co-host Dave Jixter. And welcome to In The Zone, Dave Jixter and my host, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Robert Woods. Thank you. Thank you, and his special guest tonight is uh, Bill's wide receiver and return man, Marcus Stigpen. Well, Robert, well, 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 tough, uh, tough loss yesterday. It was tough watching, and uh, you guys, uh, that loss might have taken you guys out of the playoffs. So let's talk about the game a little bit. Right, uh, you know, frustrating loss. Um, you know, I had many chances to, you know, still pull away and, uh, you know, get a win. Um, but, you know, fell short. Uh, you know, we just got to win the rest of our games. You know, we still have a chance to, you know, you know fight our way in the playoffs. You know, a lot has to happen. But, um, we just got to still worry about ourselves, win our games, and uh, you know, work on the details and uh, make sure we execute next week. Tyrod Taylor had a great game. Um, Sammy Watkins' first half had an incredible game. You had three big catches. Things seemed to click for the Bills' offense, and then the second half, things just went bad. Um, how did that happen? Right. Uh, you know, it's a lot of different factors. You know, it goes into it. You know, we're up. Um, I think we're just trying to, you know, run the ball at times, you know, you know, get out there with a win, uh, especially with it being wet out there. Uh, you know, staying healthy, you know, it's a lot of different, you know, key aspects that goes into it, but just, um, you know, made some adjustments at halftime and they were able to find ways to, to stop us. And uh, even on the offense, they came back and, and they ran the ball well. Was it frustrating to you and Sammy? I mean, Sammy was thrown the ball once the, the entire second half, and he had he, he, well, huge catches first half. Right, uh, you know, making big plays, you know, uh, putting the ball in the air, you know, Tyrod, give him a chance. And uh, he was, you know, straight, straight making plays out there, uh, beasting on him. Uh, and you got to find ways to, you know, keep, keep going to that when it's working. Um, tell us about your one catch. We're going to get to Marcus in just a little bit. But tell us yeah. about uh, your one. It was an incomplete pass. You thought you caught the ball. Yeah. You asked uh, Coach Rex Ryan to challenge it. Tell us about that. Yeah, uh, just, you know, open on the play, wide open, trying to, you know, run before I catch the ball, just trying to catch it and go. Uh, you know, didn't look the ball in. Um, you know, that's what happened. You know, bobble up in the air. Uh, Still felt like I got my hands under it. Um, talking to some players today, you know, said maybe it hit the ground at the same time my hands. But, um, you know, still feel like I, I made the catch. And, um, you know, just, you know, happy that, you know, Rex trusted me, but, you know, ended up costing us. What's the general protocol for that? If you think you made a play, the right play, you just go to the coach and say, I made the catch, challenge it, and he's going to listen to you guys? I mean, not, not necessarily. You know, sometimes, you know, he, he's out there watching well. You know, he, you know, he sees with his own eyes, and it was just a confirmation if we're, if we're you know, making that call. But, um, you know, it was later, you know, with Chris Hogan's, uh, you know, catch and, and, and complete pass, you know, I was thinking to myself, you know, maybe you challenge that one if mine wasn't challenged, you know, you know considering timeouts and stuff. But you never know how, how it plays out. And, um, you know, it's all what, you know, Rex C and I guess what the player confirms. Yeah, and I'm assuming the uh, assistant coaches and everybody up in the press box that have a headset on are, I'm assuming they're telling Rex to, to challenge uh, I mean, I don't know what's going was was said in those, in those headsets, but uh, I know you know Rex is making the calls. Uh, you know, he he sees on the field, um, and and we're on the field making the plays. And you know, we're first eyes, first judgment. And uh, you know, sometimes it's, it's you know a situation where you know leans to the player, leans to the coaches, or you know just clearly his eyes as judgment. Talk about the Bills' defense in a second, but first I wanted you to introduce us to your special guest here, Marcus. Yes. Welcome. Uh, Thanks for having me. Marcus, Thanks fan, everybody.
Yeah, Marcus, uh, you know, joined us uh, as you know a key you know, returner for us and left, uh, you know, for I think a week or two. But yeah, um, you know, glad to have him back. Longer than that. <laughs> <laughs> glad to have him back. Yeah. But um, you know, key returner for us on his Bills offense and, and special teams. Yeah, welcome back. It was a little Thank bright you. spot for the special teams. I think he averaged twenty three point four yards yeah. on uh, on your returns yesterday. Yes, sir. Yep. So uh, tell us about special teams here. Um, the most penalized special team in the league. Sorry to bring up all that. It was a very frustrating game to watch. Uh, what are you guys doing to improve the unit? Uh, really just going over new schemes and um, just really just getting guys disciplined and locked in on their assignment. I think guys just try so hard to, to get their guy that sometimes they're overly aggressive and we get penalized for it. Uh, we know what we got back there. We know we can make big plays and Sometimes just guys just lose their head and, and, and get uh, those penalties. So, I mean, it's something that we definitely got to work on because uh, special teams is, a, is a, where a lot, a lot of uh, hidden yardage is, and we can definitely make some hay. Uh, Momentum swing there. too, yes, right, sir, Marcus? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, like one big return can get the whole team sparked oh, yeah. up. Yeah. What do you guys feel the team needs to do be, to become a legitimate playoff team? I think, uh, you know, first off is I feel like we're always beating ourselves. No matter the penalties that referee calls, you know, sometimes – uh, you know, cost some games, but I feel like it's just uh, the little things, the technique, techniques, you know, we're, sometimes we're falling off of blocks, uh, you know, myself, you know, not looking the ball in. I think those, those key things um, definitely change the game and, uh, you know, keeps drives going on offense and, uh, you know, you put up points faster and, um, you know, find ways to get, you know, our key players the ball uh, continuously and I think that, that should help our offense. Marcus? Yeah, I, I agree with uh with Robert, I think the the main thing is we got to complement each other in all three phases: mm -hmm. offense, defense, and special teams. We we can't have turnovers, we can't have penalties that cost us. We had, I believe, nine penalties games that that kind of really set us back a little bit. So, we just got to be more disciplined. We got all the pieces we need. We just got to keep everybody healthy, and uh, I think the sky's the limit for us. I mean, we still have everything in front of us. It's going to be a tough task, but I believe in, in us, and I believe we can do it. Guys, we're going to take a short break, and then we're going to come back and ask about the Bills' defense that looked great at some point of the game and then not so great at other points. We'll talk about that. And we'll also take a trip to the Dunn Tire Digital Zone with my pal Brad Galbert. We'll be right back. Welcome back to In The Zone. Dave Jixer here, Robert. And I want to ask you about the Bills defense. I know you don't play defense, but you're on the sidelines and you have the whole mojo of what the, what the, what the team's doing. Um, they, they couldn't get to the Kansas City quarterback uh, once they got to him, and he was the third most sacked quarterback in the league. Uh, tell us about the Bills defense and what was the, the struggles yesterday. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, just, you know, execution. I think we played well early on going against them. I think they... They went out there and made some adjustments the second half. They went out there and ran the ball well with Spencer Ware. Uh, you know, I think we got in some key third downs, and I think Alex Smith you know, was able to make some plays with his feet. But, um, you know, we're missing some guys up front. We're missing Kyle Williams, Mario Williams. Uh, you know, those are our rush guys, and we're asking our corners, defensive backs, you know, to play man coverage. Uh, you know, without those guys up front, you know, putting that pressure on them constantly, you know, it makes the job easier. I mean, a lot harder for, um, you know, defenders to lock up, you know, so long. Uh, but we got to get out the quarterbacks, you know, like you said, uh, third most sacked and only one time. We got to make find ways to get after them and uh, you know cause turnovers. Hopefully, you guys will be able to turn this around rather quickly. We're going to take a trip to the Dunn Tire Digital Zone, brought to you by, of course, Dunn Tire, the official tire dealer of the Buffalo Bills, hosted by Brad Gelber, who, by the way, is up for a social media award. Tell us about that, Brad. Good job, Brad. Thanks, Dave. And, uh, yeah. Um, the Social Media Club of Buffalo has their first ever awards this year, so uh, I was lucky enough to be nominated. And you can check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash WBBZTV. And there's a post up there where you can vote for me if you feel so inclined. Um, and also make sure to check us out on Twitter at WBBZ. Uh, enough about me, though. Let's head into the questions for the night. And our first one's from Scott. And uh, Marcus, this one's for you. He wants to know, uh, going undrafted, did you ever think the NFL wasn't going to happen? Uh, what would you have done if it wasn't football? Uh, well, going undrafted, I, I, I knew that it was going to be tough. Um, 
it's been my dream, it's been my goal my whole life, and it's been my passion. But um, you know, I've had always had a great support, great support staff from my wife, my family, my mom. Had a great group of friends that always helped me uh, get to the next level. But um, if I wasn't playing football, then I would probably be working at a, a group home. You know, I like working with kids and guys without their uh, their fathers. Well, that's awesome to hear, Marcus. Um, our next question is from Howard, and Marcus, again, for you. He wants to know, uh, what was it like going from the CFL to the NFL? Uh, was there still passion there from the fans in Canada for football? Oh, yeah. They, they, I mean, they're still there to this day. But making that transition was, was, it was fun, actually. You know, just playing in the CFL, I, didn't, I felt a little out of place. It wasn't home for me. You know, I was playing in another country. But coming back here, you know, it felt home here in our national anthem and, and not theirs, you know, just being in front of, American fans and not Canadian fans, but it definitely uh, helped me out to be where I am right now. It helped my, my uh, determination and my grind to be stronger, so it definitely helped me out a lot to get here. Plus, the exchange rate is not oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You were actually uh, pretty close when you played for Hamilton, yeah, so uh, yeah. not far from here. Um, Derek wants to know, Robert, you can jump in on this one as well. Uh, what do you do to get over a tough loss like the past couple weeks? Like, how do you get over it? Uh, well, you know, we, we, we go week after week, um, you know, we put that one behind us, you know, you, you can't dwell over it too long. You, you dwell over that first night, but after that you got to move on to the next one. We, we watch film, we study, we get ready for our next opponent, and as tough as it is, you can't do nothing about it. So we just got to move forward and, and, and get the next one. Yeah, I think I uh, agree with Marcus, you know, you, you sit on a plane, you know, you think about it, or whether it's, you know, you're at a home game, but uh, I mean, you think about it that night, you know, you watch the film the next day, you know, and that's it. You know, you got to let it go, move on to the next opponent. Um, it's, you know, you need as much preparation as you can for the next week. Uh, so you just try to let it go as fast as you can. Great. And uh, thank you for all the great Twitter questions. And we'll send things back to you now, Dave. Hey, thanks, Brad. Good luck on your award. I'm personally going to vote for you. I know Robert's going to vote for you, yeah. too. The to Duntire Digital Brad. Zone. Marcus is going to vote also. The to Duntire Digital Zone brought to you by Duntire, the official tire dealer of the Buffalo Bills. We are going to go to the fan zone when we come back. Connect in the Fan Zone, brought to you by Sports Obsession and the Galleria Mall. And welcome back to In the Zone. We are going to go out to the Fan Zone with Robert Woods and Brad Gelber. Take it away, Brad. Thanks, Dave. And uh, we are joined tonight by some special guests from the Buffalo 716ers, Buffalo's professional basketball team. So uh, thanks, guys, for coming to the show. Uh, why don't you tell us your name and what position you play? Uh, my name is Nick Perioli. I'm a uh, point guard. I'm Jake Simmons, I'm a shooting guard. And uh, you guys, your season recently started, so uh, where can people learn more about you and if they want to attend some of the games? Uh, we do have a website, it's buffalo716ers.net. Um, it's got all of our schedule, um, our roster, our coaches, staff, everything on there. Um, we play at the Burt Flickinger Center downtown, uh, 21 Oak Street. Uh, we actually have a game coming up, a home game December 12th. Um, that'll be our next one um, after we had the two this past weekend that we won. So you guys are, uh, what's your record so far this uh, season? Just 2-0. and all. We had the first tournament this weekend. It was great. Great. And uh, I know we're, uh, we're always excited to have local sports teams come on the show and talk a little about it. Jake, uh, have you, is this your first season as well? No, this is my second season, actually. Um, it's pretty, it's amazing. It's a comfortable uh, chemistry um, field team, and everyone um, loves each other. And that's the main thing I like when teams and everybody love each other and get along. And winning is always great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, like I said, um, we're happy to have you here. So we're going to pass things over to Robert now, who has a special guest with him as well. So Robert, take it away. Thanks, Brad. Here we are with special guest Luis and her son Nick. Tell us a special story. Hi, this is my son Nick. Um, we're big fans of the show. We've been coming for about four years now. We're big uh, fans of Fred Jackson and yours now, of thank course. You. Uh, Nick just was afforded a 75-yard touchdown. He played uh, modified football for West Seneca East Middle School, and he has some challenges. He was born with a, a disorder called Kabuki, but his coach, Overton, Weiss, and Nicosia felt the need to reward him for all of his hard work and dedication. Yeah. And one night when we were playing Frontier School, uh, both coaches got on board and agreed that he needed to have his shining moment. So. 
they gave him the ball and allowed for him to run a 75-yard touchdown, and we've been celebrating ever since. Oh, there he goes. Give it up. How was it running in? How'd it feel? It felt super exciting. That's fine. That's amazing. Good job. Let's give it up for Nick again, guys. <laughs> and also, we brought something. Myself being a breast cancer survivor, I know that the Buffalo Bills are big supporters of all of us. Yeah. And uh, we used to bring uh, Fred his chocolate chip cookies, and now we're bringing you some peanut butter cookies. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Share this with my man Marcus over here. Back to you, Brad. Thanks, Robert. And uh, we're going to present Luis with the $25 gift certificate to the Buffalo Roadhouse Grill tonight for being our, uh, our member of the audience. So uh, thanks for that and uh, a great story. Uh, back to you now, Dave. Hey, thanks, guys. Nice job, Nick. Nice job. 75 yards. Wow. I would need oxygen after a 75 yard run. But, uh, and Robert, I just want to let you know that peanut butter cookies are my favorite too. We are going to take uh, a trip to the Gelber and O'Connell Hot Shot Challenge when we come back. We're going to see if these guys can throw a football. We'll be right back. The Hot Shot Challenge Zone is brought to you by Gelber and O'Connell, your car accident and injury law firm. Call 633-5050. Welcome back to the Gelber and O'Connell Hot Shot Zone. We have two teams here. We have Team Thigpen. Who's your teammate over there? This is Crystal. Hi, Crystal. How are you? Good, thank you. And who's this? Maverick. Okay, Maverick. Hi, Maverick. Which one's going to throw the football? I am. Okay, good, because Maverick, it looks like uh, he's a little scared right now. And then uh, Team Woods, who's your uh, teammate there? My guest is Celeste, and she tells me that she is awesome at this, so we'll see. Is that true? No. <laughs> right, right. Well, listen, We're little, little self-confidence, step right up there and, and take a throw, Celeste. Let's go, Celeste. Here we go, playing for a Sweetworks candy basket. And look at that. <laughs> look at that. All right. You guys are in trouble over here. All right, Robert. Two, nothing. Okay, Crystal, you want to go first? Crystal and Maverick, here we go. You need to make this for that Sweetworks candy basket. Ah, oh, just a little bit outside. Go ahead, just for uh, just for fun here. We want to see. There we go. Two to one. Congratulations, a Sweetwork candy basket for you. And we have some Dave and Buster's gift cards for you, which which you'll enjoy a lot there, Maverick. So the Gelber and O'Connell Hot Shot Zone, we're going to take things back inside. We're going to see what these guys need to do to beat Houston and continue our playoff hopes. We will be right back. Get in the zone this winter with a snowblower from Creekside Sales and Service. Enter to win one now. Go to WBBZ.TV and click on the Creekside logo. One entry per person per family. Creekside Sales and Service is your factory authorized Cub Cadet and Mahindra dealer. South Transit Road, Lockport. And welcome back. Larry Nice was one of our snowblower winners, and he just picked his snowblower up. Congratulations, Larry Nice. And don't forget, you can still go to WBBZ.TV. We have one more snowblower to give away just in time for the winter season. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> you, you don't need a snowblower, do you? No, I uh, got my, my guy, Joe, who... Who hooks it up? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> who hooks up the yard? Yeah, tell Joe to come over to my house. Hopefully, we won't need one. But listen, let's let's talk about uh, playing back at home. You, you have a big game against Houston. Um, you haven't really played that well at home, but you maybe you can turn things around. Uh, you know, good chance to turn things around. You know, Houston's uh, you know coming into our home. Uh, you know, we got to win at home. Uh, been on the road for a while. Just got to find a way to, you know, get our offense going and, and stop their offense, uh, get big pin free on special teams. Do you think the crowd gets uh, you guys a little bit too much pumped up and you need to relax a little bit? Or? No, no, no. We love it. We love hearing the crowd. Uh, love the atmosphere. Uh, got to go out, get, get there and uh, get a win for the home crowd. Marcus, we need some big, uh, big plays from special teams this week. Yes, sir. Definitely. Um, I'll be definitely being there doing my studying, and uh, I'm going to try to do the best I can. I can't guarantee anything, but I'm definitely going to try my hardest to go ahead and take one back. Yeah, and keep the playoff hopes alive. We oh, need definitely. to make the playoffs. Definitely, definitely. We need our fans as well. You bounce back. You bounce back and beat Houston. It's a whole new ball game. So special thanks for joining us, Mr. Thigpen. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and welcome it. back in the Bills uniform. Yes, so sir. good to Thank see you, you back. Feel good to be back. Robert, good luck against, against Houston, man. <laughs> Thank you. All right. In the zone every Monday, talking about a Bills win next Monday. <laughs> 